Okay, so here we are with part two of exam review for exam one. This is chapter two, genes and genetic diseases. Here are some helpful links. I started pointing that earlier. All, this is mind boggling to me. All of our genetic material is in each one of our nuclei in our body. Okay. It's in our DNA, and DNA is very long strands. It actually, in a resting cell that is not replicating, looks like a really long, huge bowl of spaghetti. Okay. Now, when it's time to replicate, DNA will form into chromosomes. It has, excuse me, it is in total all the time when it's in strands or chromosomes organized into what's called a double helix. And that double helix, I'm sure you're all familiar with, is this presentation. And I go a little bit more than we need to, but it has what's called the sugar phosphate bone. I think that's a little inconsequential for you guys. And then we have these nitrogenous bases. Okay? And these all together form what's called nucleotides. Once again, we're getting into the weeds with that. I just want you to know the basics. Now, for DNA, you will need to know these bases. Okay. And I would look up the bases because they're slightly different. Once again, I'm going to make your work for it a little bit. Slightly different bases in RNA. DNA has this double helix that is located only in our nucleus. DNA doesn't leave our nucleus. RNA does. That's another difference. And they also have different bases. Okay, so look up those bases in RNA. This very, very, very long strand. I mean, it is unbelievable. There's a great picture. Hold on. Um, my, that I teach with in my AMP class. Okay, let's look at this first. So I teach with this as well. DNA stays in the nucleus. There are different um, versions of RNA that come in and out of the nucleus to create proteins. Okay, so that's what we're talking about here. And that's about as far as we'll go with that. Um, In just a second here. here. Okay. So, you know how teeny tiny chromosomes are. Boop, boop. Okay. If we blow this up, and then here's a tiny strand getting blown up, and then here's the wound up double alpha helix is called. It's, it's just crazy how much DNA. That's one chromosome. That's one part of one chromosome. Okay. So just to give you an idea of that structure, and I, I'm really getting way too in-depth there. So sorry about that. Okay. So we have DNA strand. We have a nucleotide. That's the unit that organizes those nitrogenous bases. Look up those nitrogenous bases for DNA and RNA. Now, other than those sex cells of sperm and oocytes or eggs, um, other cells, as long as they can, will replicate through mitosis. And they will, what will happen is they'll duplicate that DNA strand into two identical strands, organize it into chromosomes. That is called prophase. Lines them up on the center. I, so how I remembered this was prochromo, prochromosome. Lines them up on the equator is metaphase, me, on the equator. So what happens is the cell basically has an imaginary equator down the center. And when the cell is getting ready to split those duplicated chromosomes or genetic material, line up on the equator, me on the equator, okay? then splits the chromosomes and they split <laughs> the chromosome split anaphase and then the next step is when the cell splits that's called telophase tell the cell to split <laughs> so stupid this is how i memorize things okay those are each of the phases 
of mitosis. There's other phases. Um, your book goes into how DNA replicates and what those phases are. There are subphases to that. We're going to keep it basic and keep it to these phases. Okay, so memorize those. And then what happens after the cell splits is you have two identical cells. And this is how we get tissues to replicate and create new cells that look similar to the original cells, just like the cells on the surface of your skin. Mind-blowing. So chromosomes can be organized on a chart called a karyotype. Um, there are 22 pairs of what are called autosomes. There are everything other than the sex chromosomes. And you're familiar with those. We have XX and XY, um, female and male, respectively. We have a total of 23 pairs or 46 chromosomes. Okay. Now, these you will have to, once again, make any work for it, to find these and know these, know if they affiliate with any sort of genetic um, genital diseases. Okay. Re review the phases of mitosis. Know that DNA also forms the template for proteins or the structures of our body. I've been through that a few times. RNA is what transports and carries out the messages to organize the proteins that are created. Those proteins are then excreted out of cells and they go somewhere to create structures of our body. It's unbelievable. Okay? Proteins are actually created by structures called amino acids. That may ring a bell from chemistry a long, long time ago. Amino acids create, when they are linked together, long um, chains called polypeptides. We can, there are differences, we can sort of call them the same thing. Polypeptides are a protein, or you could just say a protein in general. As you can imagine, <laughs> it's amazing to me that things go right as often as they do with this really, really long strand of DNA. It could be two meters or, or also six feet long with whatever you're used to talking about. Some of these diseases are listed below. There are mutations of those genetic material. Um, they can occur with base pair substitution or frame shift mutation. There can be additional or removed base pairs. The general gist with genetics is knowing what's going wrong with the disease. Any change in the normal order of genes or addition or subtraction can cause genetic issues. Review these genetic diseases, signs and symptoms, the genetics of each. This is important. I'm making you do a little legwork here. Know if it's autosomal dominant or autosomal recessive. If it's X-link dominant or recessive, for example, Turner syndrome has only one X chromosome. Know the signs, the symptoms, the age, the genetic variation, whether it's more dominant in male, female, signs, symptoms, age range, does it manifest early? Does it manifest late? Is it a life-limiting disease, or does it let that patient have a full life with some limitations? Okay? There's your list. I know. you got to do the legwork here. I've done a lot for you already. Okay? Epigenetic effects um, is the same DNA sequence, but it can produce different phenotypes due to a chemical modification that alters the expression of that gene. This is kind of an up-and-coming research area. Um, you know, what we see could be other things is chemicals. Uh, chemicals in our environment, plastics in our environments, forever chemicals in our environment can change our DNA, which is quite scary. Okay, chapter six, innate immunity, inflammation, and wound healing. There are basic um, ways to fight infections that you have upon birth. Um, those are membranes. Those are um, mucous membranes or skin, for example, and they are simply barriers. There are also cells that can activate upon injury in the immediate area as well as dis from distant areas. Then there are memory cells that are formed after an infection that can fight that infection should we be exposed to it again. 
The other thing about inflammation is, <clears throat> this is a very important concept because I think we're seeing this across the board with people, is it needs to be an appropriate level. If you have an injury or an infection and the inflammatory response keeps going, you're eventually going to damage your own tissue. If you have an infection or damage, it should have an inflammatory response, which goes back and remits after a while. If a patient or you have had, I'm sure you've all probably had back pain, and the inflammation know that happens, goes crazy, especially if you have a herniated disc, because your body actually doesn't recognize that herniated disc as its own tissue, and it attacks it. Okay, so your inflammation can go crazy. Hopefully, eventually, it'll go back to an appropriate level. So it's good at normal levels, but when it's gone out of control, it can damage tissues. Now, we can also have what are called autoimmune diseases. Autoimmune diseases, in short, are when our body can't recognize our tissue as its own and then attacks them. Rheumatoid arthritis is a great example where the body attacks the, um, that person's joints and damages those joints due to excess inflammation. We don't understand why. That's why we can't really treat it very well yet. Um, it's really an interesting field of research. Other um, autoimmune diseases, just to give you an idea, is like Graves' disease, where we attack the thyroid. Celiac disease, where people cannot digest gluten and the body actually will damage the internal lining of the GI tract so they cannot absorb substances appropriately. Okay, So um, balancing information is really important. Below, once again, I'm going to have you do a little legwork. I want you to define these. Think about inflammation. What are the body's steps to produce inflammation? What are mast cells? What are their responses? Okay. Indirect and direct transmission of diseases. I included a web link um, that I think clarifies some information that was a little bit lacking in the notes in the book. Um, T and B lymphocytes and what do they do for the immune system? Vicaria. Colic receptors. I gave you the definition for that. Hemotaxis. Um, and opsonization. They kind of go hand in hand in a way. Okay. Um, so, opsonization is the marking of cells for destruction. Chemotaxis is a release of chemicals into the bloodstream that bring inflammatory cells to that area. So, you cut yourself, um, these two things work together to fight off infection. Endo and phagocytosis, we've already reviewed. What is this degranulation and what does it work with or as a response of the basics of Gray's disease? These are all uh, white blood cells that I want you to know. Um, natural killer cells should kind of be off on its own because these are the basic white blood cells. Um, let's just put it that way. But I sort of put natural killer cells in there. Um, you know. Oh, I always have a problem with these. <laughs> Who's laughing? There we go. Okay. So they're kind of on their own. These are really the main white blood cells. That's why I wanted to put this part. Great to this. Talk about blood supply and how important blood supply is with tissue healing. Adaptive immunity. Okay, so this is when we are exposed to antigens or foreign agents or infectious diseases that are deemed dangerous to us. 
Her body forms a specific response to that antigen and provides a more robust, robust response, okay? So, and some of these overlap a little bit, okay, with just other immune responses. So review these innate, active, and passive response, immune responses, and these antibodies. Okay, antibodies are um, substances that are created in response to an antigen. They come from plasma cells. They are what are called glycoproteins. They are sugars and proteins that fight off infections. Okay, if you want to get more in the weeds with that, this is a great explanation from NIH that you can look at. So these um, immunoglobins, excuse me, are the main antibodies that we will look at in this class. And so D, we're not going to talk about a whole bunch. IgM is secreted during a primary response. So pretty much with any infection, these IgMs will be released. IgGs will be a secondary response, and they are the secondary form of those major circulating immunoglobulins. So pretty much with any immune response, you'll have this pop in and then this pop in. IgA is an external secretion such as saliva. And then IgE will be a response with allergic reactions, uh, bee sting, for example. And that's not to say that M and G won't be stimulated as well. This will be um, the major response with allergic reactions, okay? So read through this, know this breakdown, um, and then look up those other structures. And of course, if you have any questions, let me know. I hope this is helpful. I, I really tried hard to put together a good overview of all the material, and then I tried to pull out things that were um, relevant and that you should look up and review on your own. Don't forget, I also have videos on YouTube I have the ones for Wilkes. I have plenty of other ones on anatomy, physiology, and pathophysiology. If you would like to review them, I would really narrow in on this review. I think it'll be quite helpful. All right. Thank you very much. Have a great day. And uh, study hard. Learn your path. Thanks. Take care. Bye.